Don't mess with America. My guest tonight is a one-man content machine, podcast, videos, commentaries, thinly veiled threats to take away the phones of the Twitter blue check brigade. Our friend Siraj Hashmi from the Washington Examiner up late with me on the final five. I had to bring it up, Siraj. Uh, what? What? The list? The list. The list. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows about Everybody the list. Knows now about it's the canon. List. Exactly. Uh, we got to talk about something else, though. I, we, we had, I had topics planned. You're wearing a, a tan suit, and uh, mm -hmm. that was trending today. And I that think was. I think we got to talk about that. So just because it was one of the dumbest controversies of the Obama administration, but today Mitch McConnell shows up in the Oval Office wearing a tan suit, and and of course Twitter goes nuts. Uh, not to mention Islam was also trending because Joe <laughs> Biden had some Muslim summit. So it's Islam and tan suits. It's like it, it's, this is it's your a, day. This is Siraj Hashmi's day. Today is my day. July twentieth, twenty twenty. God is shining. Allah is shining down on me. <laughs> yeah, there's the picture. And by the way, somebody pointed this out. And again, we'll move on to the actual news. A tan suit with black socks for for Mitch McConnell as well. So somebody has to uh, can't do that. Can't do that. Can't that, do that. That does not work well together. All right, let's talk about some important stuff. So um, as we talk about. What's been going on here in Washington? You've been doing the, the White House Weekly uh, video cast for the Washington Examiner over the last several weeks, the last several months. And uh, you, you pointed something out today that is very true. This news cycle has moved so quickly that you kind of forget about the Roger Stone commutation of about a week, almost, a, you know, about a week ago or so. And everything mm -hmm. that has happened since then. And one thing that President Trump has been very good at is despite everything going on with COVID, he's able to go back to these topics that will really fire up his base and get people excited. And they see Roger Stone and they see a guy that has been persecuted, something that President Trump has said as much. Yeah, what's interesting about the Roger Stone case is while he is guilty, and there's probably little denying that he is, uh, a lot of Trump supporters would argue that the whole premise of his uh, prosecution uh, was fundamentally flawed mm -hmm. through the Russia probe. But if you look at everything happening in the lens of COVID-19, even if Roger Stone did serve in time in prison, it would probably be pretty short considering that many prisoners have been uh, basically but put on early release, especially right. if they've had nonviolent offenses, well, Michael, which Roger Stone was. Michael Cohen, too. I mean, even though he's back in jail, that was one of the reasons Michael Cohen was out of jail. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And because, you know, that guy, he doesn't really think, he, he shoots first <laughs> and then thinks later, he's back in jail. <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. So uh, another thing that, that unfolded last week, and I thought, again, is we talk about just, just some of, the, some of the, the mindless things that the media gets sucked into, was the back and forth when it came to Goya. You had the CEO of Goya coming to the White House, praising President Trump, saying, thank God for President Trump. This started off all back and forth. Some people were saying they were going to boycott Goya. And then you have Ivanka and you have the president uh, basically urging a boycott of, Voica, uh, of Goya, posing with the pictures of the beans. And look, I get it. I get that it's good Twitter fodder. It is not necessarily the most ethical thing, especially uh, when you are the president or the White House advisor. But, but that's gonna, another something that really... While we talk about it, it gives us something to talk about. D this doesn't really have any staying power, does it? No. I mean, President Obama, he picked winners and losers just like President Trump is picking winners and losers. But he just happens to do it over social media endorsements as opposed to maybe uh, funneling funds to these particular companies. I don't know if any federal funds are going to Goya. I no. I'm sure that the reason why Goya's CEO uh, was there at the White House was because there's some partnership going on with the federal government between him and Goya. Yeah. I will say, though, the uh, I think New York's bodega uh, co-op or their association, they uh, made an announcement over the past weekend that they would not have a boycott of Goya products, that they would continue to sell their products. It, it just amazed me, though, again, how something like this, and I think that, that it's an indictment about, well, let's be honest, the media, it's a, it's a, it's a broad term, but the fact that things like this, just because something's playing out on social media and just because you know, people are a very select group of people on either side are getting fired up about it. It doesn't mm -hmm. merit this ad nauseum coverage. And I feel like that's what we got into with that story. Yeah, it's all resistance Twitter uh, using their virtue signaling ways to say that they are against uh, President Trump by boycotting a Hispanic owned <laughs> business. And it is a, a corporation that many uh, Hispanic Americans rely on mm -hmm. uh, for their own nourishment and if you want to boycott them fine you have your right as an American right. to, to purchase whatever you like but uh, I think getting up in arms over praising the president is just uh, it's a, a bit uh, 
it, it, it just misses the mark. I yeah. mean, they've done this all, all the time, and it just never – Whatever their intent is, it always misses the mark. And I think, too, when you go down through all the products you may encounter on a certain day and you consume them, I mean, who knows? They could support things that you certainly stand against. But I 100%. Think it's just, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, hey, let's talk about another thing that happened over the weekend. And I know uh, you, you've, you've, done some, uh, you've done some coverage of the, the, the confluence between politics and hip-hop before. But Kanye West, uh, we, we've been talking quite a bit about this this. I guess, presidential campaign. I mean, there has been documents filed, at least in Oklahoma so far. But we saw him yesterday in South Carolina, um, which, I, I, I mean, look, I, I get that there is, uh, this, is, this is a fascinating um, chapter of the 2020 election, but there are many people that are, are apparently concerned. That comes from TMZ. We talked to them earlier tonight on Fox 5. I mean, do you think that, that this, this, and again, I, I, I guess we can call it a presidential campaign. I mean, does this merit the coverage? You know, he's running as an independent, again, in certain states. Uh, is there something to be concerned about here? Or is he bringing up legitimate points that people should be talking about? No, he's not bringing up any legitimate points. I mean, he's talked about over in South Carolina, that if you have a baby, you should get a million dollars. I mean, these aren't actual real policy right. goals. These are things that are just, you know, he's just riffing off the cuff. And there's obviously a legitimate concern because he has admitted that he has he suffers from bipolar disorder and his family is worried about him. He didn't meet the South Carolina deadline to get on the ballot in right. November. So that's out of there. He's only in Oklahoma. I mean, <laughs> I, I hear, I talk to people and they say Kanye might be a legitimate threat. I'm like, no, no, he's not. He's not even going to take away votes from Biden. He's not going to take away. He might actually take more votes away from Trump because as far as you and I both know, Kanye is canceled uh, with many people on the left considering his embrace of Donald Trump right. in both 2016 and then his Oval Office but, visit in 2018. But he says he's done. He says he says that the, the magic is over, the bromance is over with President Trump. Uh, hey, Siraj, people don't forget. Yeah, exactly. Siraj, we got to go, but really quickly, you, how many podcasts are you up to these days? Uh, I'm at four. <laughs> I thought that's what it was. It was something like that. I follow him on social media, and uh, good luck. Good luck to your Red Sox. They're starting the season on a Friday at home against the Orioles. So I don't even know what that means in, in COVID. I mean, you got to start hot, and that's it. Exactly. That's it. It's if they I, don't start hot. You, you do a 10-game win streak, you're done. Yeah. All right, uh, Siraj. Good to see you again. We're back after this in the final five.